It's been a while since I did a book review on my channel, and that's mostly because even though I'm a big fan of reading books, I don't always feel the need to review every single thing that I read, like I feel the need to review every movie that I watch and some TV shows. So if I review any kind of book on my channel, it's mostly because I feel the need to talk about it, to recommend it to people that probably don't know of its existence. And that's definitely true for this book, which is called In Every Generation, which is a continuation of Buffy the Vampire Slayers, the TV show. A couple things that you should know about it is that it takes place, I think, in 2020, uh, which is several, several years after the series finale of the show. And another thing that you should keep in mind is that it ignores the comic book continuation of the show called like season eight through 12. And I understand why somebody would ignore that. To me, when I tried to read that comic book series, it got convoluted, it got weird, it got wacky, it got comic booky. you know? It didn't really feel like the Buffy series that I knew and loved before that. There was just something about it that didn't keep me engaged. It didn't really feel like Buffy. Buffy and I love Buffy. I, part of the reason why was because there was just there's all these different slayers and their own individual stories going on and that's fine and dandy but I, I couldn't really get into it. And every generation can be seen as kind of an alternate canon if you will. Kind of like the Halloween series where they had a billion of those sequels and then when they had these most recent uh, films starring Jamie Lee Curtis they ignored those movies and they're like, this is really Halloween 3 and 4 and whatever. I don't think you can call this canon, but it should be because when it comes down to feeling like the old show in every generation is very, very close. I mean, you can't get Joss Whedon-isms perfect, only he can do that. But if I were forced to say what comes the most close to Joss Whedon in every generation, 100%. This feels like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, even though a lot of the characters aren't in it. A few are, don't get me wrong, the main ones you see are Willow, Xander, and Spike. But it really focuses on Willow's daughter, Frankie, who turns out to be the next generation of Vampire Slayers. And because she's also Willow's daughter, she's also part witch. So for the very first time you got a, a witch vampire slayer, which is really, really intriguing. Now, the plot of this story is that there's this thing called a Slayer Convention where all the Slayers that are born come together and they're watchers and everything. They all come to this convention to do Vampire Slayer things, but it's like struck with a terrorist attack of some kind. There's an explosion and all these Slayers die, or it's at least really, really heavily implied that they all die, including Buffy. And what's the phrase? In every generation, a Slayer is born. It's only born when the previous Slayer dies. So when this explosion happens, Frankie is born into the uh, the world of Vampire Slayers and has to get used to it, and she begins to create her own Scooby gang of sorts with new people, and it's really, really interesting. And if you're like, oh, they can't kill Buffy a, a 15th millionth time because she always comes back, that's, you know, that is true enough. We don't know if she died or not. It's heavily implied that she did, but it's also suggested that not everybody died at this convention because there was a portal that was found there that maybe some people escaped from, but it's really hard to tell because when there's an explosion that big, you know, there's not much left anyway. So they don't know if anybody escaped. They don't know if the portal was for anybody to come in to make the explosion in the first place. They don't know everything. So part of the book is definitely a mystery as to what happened and what that means for the future. But it's also very much a coming of age story where this Frankie character has to learn what it means to be a Slayer in the first place. And there's a completely new assortment of characters that are somewhat based off of the original Scooby gang including this book's variation of Angel. So we got this dark brooding character you think is evil in the first place because he's known to eat hearts, but it turns out just been looking after Frankie this whole time, kind of a guardian character and kind of a romantic at heart, but not for Frankie, for somebody else. Well, that, I won't tell you too much about that because you know, you read it for yourself. Another really, really interesting aspect of this book is how they represent Spike. The reason why is because Spike is Frankie's watcher. There was an episode in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it was like a dream sequence, where Spike says to the gang, Giles here is teaching me to be a watcher. Says, I've got the stuff. Giles here is gonna teach me to be a watcher. Says, I got the stuff. Spike's like a son to me. Well, that's good. And I've remembered it 
all these years later, and here he is actually being a watcher. And not only that, but in order to be her watcher, he also has to be the librarian of the high school, just like Jaws was. But nobody's gonna believe he's a watcher because he's young and he wears leather, just like, you know, how Spike normally does. And so Willow had to create a charm, a spell of some sort, to make him look older to make him look as old as Willow is. Why would they do this? I keep asking myself this. It sounds like a blueprint to explain James Marster's age in a real life live action adaptation of the story. Because we all knew that Buffy was going to have a reboot of some sort, a revival of some sort, that was either scrapped or pushed back for indefinitely or whatever. My theory ends up being what if this was the blueprint for that show? Like, it'll go through a million different edits before it actually comes on air, but what if this was like one of the first drafts, just for an idea, that would have James Marsters back in the show and explain why he aged? I thought that that was brilliant. That was probably my favorite part of the book, when they explained his age, even though it's a book and he didn't have to age. Overall, I like it, you know? I like this Frankie the Vampire Slayer idea and I like that it feels like Buffy. I, I like that it feels like Joss Whedon could have written some of the jokes, some of the interactions between all these characters because in, in, a, in a word, the original series wouldn't have ever lasted as long as it did if it didn't have all those characters and how they were odd and how they interacted with each other because that's what made it relatable, that's what made it funny, that's what made it so engaging in the first place. I sense that in this book. Whenever I would read complaints about the book in general, it came down to people who didn't watch the show, and so they read it like a typical teen vampire story and thought it was crap. You can't do that. You cannot read this book like that. You have to at least have some knowledge in the show in order to appreciate the things that it does and the ways in which it does it. Because if you didn't watch the show, then yeah, it's gonna be like, I, I, don't, get, I don't get it. That's the one thing that I'll say right off the bat. If you haven't watched the show, you need to watch it before you read the book. Time for a rating. So when it comes down to ratings on Goodreads, they only let you rate it one, two, three, four, or five stars. And they don't let you do like half stars or anything like that, which really aggravates me. So on Goodreads, I'm rating it four stars. But if I can rate it half stars, I'd say four and a half. I think that that's pretty accurate for this book because it feels just like the original show and it has a ways to go before the story's complete. Oh yeah, and uh, if you saw it like a TV show, I would say that it contains probably two episodes, though it flows together really, really well. The first episode has to do with almost like an Instagram demon that uses social media to like kill you by like clawing off your skin because you think you look less than perfect. I thought that, that was really smart. And the second episode, or more like the overarching story, has to do with a character called the Countess, which I would compare to the master of the first season of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, which is like this ancient, ancient, ancient vampire that is basically indestructible, which is not good news for a brand new Slayer that has no idea how to like stake a basic vampire, let alone an ancient evil that is apparently indestructible. And I thought that that was really smart. I'm really interested in seeing where the series goes from here. But guys, have you read In Every Generation? Are you a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Let me know and as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with my next book review. And until then, peace.